Hey there everybody, Sage of Pop. I'm here, founder of the School of Evolutionary Herbalism, and it's Q&A day today. And uh, this week's question that I wanted to share with you all is, um, is a very interesting question that comes up from time to time in regards to whether an herb can actually work like an antibiotic and possible benefits and possible risks um, in terms of using herbs to treat pathogenic infections. And I think this is a pretty relevant topic these days as we are in the midst of the whole COVID-19 situation and I'm seeing more and more people reaching out um, to plants as ways of strengthening their immune system and wanting to look at antiviral and antibacterial herbs and how to protect themselves and their family. Um, but as most of us know, uh, standard antibiotics can have pretty detrimental effects on the body, specifically in regards to the gut flora. So uh, in this week's Q&A, we're going to be talking about uh, antiseptic, antimicrobial plants, and they're kind of weighing their benefits and risks, and also kind of a, 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 what I think is a, a really excellent discussion in terms of the difference between how an herbal medicine works in the human organism in contrast to how um, a lot of pharmaceutical medications and specifically antibiotics work in the human organism. So uh, I hope you enjoy uh, the question and answer for this week. First question number one here is uh, coming to us from Sharon LeMay and Materia Medica Monthly. And Sharon is asking, since Lamatium kills off microorganisms, is there a danger it will destroy our gut flora the same way an antibiotic would, especially if we drank it as a tea? Uh, does using the tincture keep it in the respiratory system so it never gets down into the gut in any meaningful strength so when used for a cold slash flu situation, the gut flora are not impacted? Although since it also affects the urinary tract, it seems its powers go throughout the body. So I'm just wondering if we are nuking our gut flora with lamation. Great question, Sharon. Um, this is actually, um, this question brings up some really interesting uh, dynamics, I think, in the way that we think about how an herbal medicine works in contrast to how drugs work, right? Um, so, you know, this is a question that, that I, I get actually quite a bit, uh, not just around Lomatium, but around other herbs too. Uh, I, I especially see this one a lot with a lot of the berberine containing plants, uh, Hydrastis canadensis or golden seal, uh, Mahonia aquifolium or Oregon grape, uh, Coptis or gold thread, um, or really any plant that, you know, you look it up in your herb book and you see, you know, antimicrobial, antibacterial, um, oh, is, th is this going to adversely affect the gut flora? Um, generally speaking, uh, I think the, the best answer to that question is, for the most part, no. Um, Obviously, I don't really know if there's been a whole lot of, you know, scientific research where they measured someone's gut flora and then they took, you know, some of these whole plants uh, or tinctures or teas of these plants and then measured it again and found that they were adversely affected. I'm not sure if that exists, but from a clinical perspective, um, through utilizing these remedies, we don't really see any of the... After effects that are pretty common um, from, as Sharon said, nuking uh, the gut flora with an antibiotic, right? Which we oftentimes see, with, you know, fatigue or post antibiotic use digestive imbalances. Uh, it's really common these days for people to have digestive symptoms, digestive issues. And when we really do some digging in to the case and figure out, well, when did it start? A lot of times you can trace it back to a time when that person was put on a round of antibiotics. Um, so it's really common. Uh, I've used a lot of herbs that are typically considered antimicrobial or antibacterial herbs and haven't seen anything that would indicate that it's adversely affecting 
the gut flora, and especially in the case with Lamatium, this is not something that I've seen. Um, one study that was done um, on a berberine isolate, right? So this would be isolated, um, an isolated alkaloid, right? Berberine, the uh, kind of famous alkaloid that we find in golden seal and, and Oregon grape root that has been demonstrated to have a very strong antibacterial property. Um, berberine isolate was administered to people in doses I would say higher than you're gonna probably be able to get from uh, taking capsules or drinking a tea or, or taking a tincture. And uh, there was no you know, uh, signs of any type of gut flora imbalance. And that was actually a study that was done where they measured the gut flora. And uh, after a period of time of administering pure berberine alkaloids, um, they did not see it adversely affecting the gut flora. So I think that is a really good case at, at the very least for the berberine containing plants. Um, you know, one of the things about that is that, you know, with especially with, and your question kind of brings this up with tinctures, um, generally speaking, when we're talking about antiseptic plants, we're, we're seeing, you know, there's certain compounds in the plants that will have a direct antiseptic effect, meaning they have to come into direct contact with that pathogen in order to render it ineffective or kill it or do whatever they're going to do. Now, when it comes to the digestive system, most tinctures don't actually really get all the way down into the intestines. Um, this is why oftentimes when treating the uh, intestinal lining, uh, leaky gut protocols, or really wanting to treat, um, you know, bacterial imbalances in the gut, SIBO, parasites, things like that, we generally don't use tinctures um, for a few reasons. One is that people typically dose tinctures in, you know, anywhere the range of, you know, on the low dose range, a couple drops to standard dosing, maybe one or two squirts of a tincture, 30 drops, 60 drops, two on the higher dose range, you know, up to five mils. Um, but a lot of that tincture is getting absorbed through the mucosa in the mouth and in the stomach. Most of it is not reaching the intestinal tract. So that's part one. Part two is that um, if we're thinking of you know, the intestinal tract, there's a lot of surface area there. And even if you're taking on the higher range of one of these tinctures, five mils, um, that is five milliliters is not nearly enough liquid to actually uh, come into direct, essentially topical contact with the entire intestinal tract. This is why, generally speaking, powders and water extracts like infusions or decoctions are preferable for treating the intestinal tract, like when we're wanting to have a topical action, maybe tonifying the mucosal membrane or uh, having some sort of antiseptic property in there. Uh, the powders and water extracts are actually going to get in there significantly more readily um, than a tincture. Then if we think of surface area, right? If you're drinking a quart of tea uh, a day, well, that quart of tea is gonna ha have much more contact with the surface area of the intestinal lining than you know, five mils three times a day of a tincture. So that's a really important factor here as well in that oftentimes uh, those plants um, aren't actually going to actually get into direct contact with the intestinal uh, microbiome uh, and therefore not really be able to adversely affect it. Uh, so that's another aspect here. Um, I think the other aspect is here really thinking about plants in a very different way than just them being antimicrobial or antibacterial. Uh, we have to understand that herbs work really differently than drugs do, right? So when we see an herb called like a natural antibiotic, it's like, eh, I don't really know how I feel about referring to herbs in that way because herbs do a lot more than just 
kill bacteria, right? Lamatium is doing a lot more than just killing bacteria and viruses. Organ grape uh, doing a lot more than just killing a, a bacteria. An antibiotic pretty much does one thing. Um, plants are so much more complex than isolated singular compounds that we find in, in most pharmaceutical medicines. So there's a difference here in terms of kind of our orientation or how we think about the way an herb works. And from looking at an herb through the lens of vitalism and the intelligence of nature and understanding the human body as a reflection of nature and herbs obviously are of nature, grow in uh, ecosystems, um, plants are shifting that ecological state of the body. And this is one way in which I say plants have, I guess we might refer to it as an antiseptic or antimicrobial or bacterial property. Maybe it's not necessarily that like the plant is going in there and like killing bugs in your body, right? It's more they're shifting the environment of the body and making the environment of the body less hospitable to those pathogens. Um, this is one of the things about infection is that when we get an infection, it's very common for those parasites or bacteria and things like that to change the ecological state of the tissue that they're infecting to make it more hospitable for them. From an energetic perspective, this more often than not is in the form of dampness. Um, when we, you know, and if you think of nature, that makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, a, a swampy, marshy bog uh, or a really stagnant pond tends to flourish and uh, bacteria and things like that tend to flourish and thrive in those types of environments. Outside in nature, the same is true within our own body. And so a lot of these remedies we see thinking of kind of using these examples of Oregon grape or golden seal uh, or lamatium, these are all damp clearing remedies, right? Lamatium, very pungent, resinous, aromatic, stimulant, expectorant, very good for clearing uh, fluid stagnation in the lungs. Golden seal and organ grape are both very powerful bitter tonic plants that drain fluids down and out. Um, golden seal, organ grape to a degree, but golden seal specifically is also very astringent. Uh, so it's not just draining fluids, but it's locally uh, tightening the tissues and, and kind of drying those local tissues out as well. And this is most definitely contributing to their property in terms of uh, making bacteria not thrive and flourish in the body. So I think that's just another important point to make here in terms of just this concept of an antibacterial plant or an antiseptic plant. Yes, there are compounds there that can kill bugs, so to speak, to use super layman's terms. Uh, but uh, we also have to remember the humoral effect of these plants or the energetic effect of these plants as absolutely contributing to that net effect. So I would say the short answer is no, I don't think you have to worry too much about lamatium nuking the intestinal bacteria. Um, I think uh, this is something that I, kind of, I guess, on a little bit more of a philosophical level, I believe that plants have an innate intelligence, um, medicinal plants in particular, um, to, they just know how to work within the human organism. And while, yes, certain plants, if used incorrectly, can lead to certain degrees of imbalance, uh, I don't think plants on their own, if worked with in, in a intelligent way in a holistic way and used in uh, moderate to standard you know standard kind of dosing and protocols and things like that i don't really think we have too much to worry about in terms of uh, plants severely uh, imbalancing the microbiome we also have to keep in mind here that typically when you're treating some sort of infection, this is oftentimes an acute situation, right? So you're usually not taking 
plants for months and months and months in huge heroic doses um, for really prolonged periods of time, maybe in those situations there's a possibility there could be an adverse impact, but typically that's not how these plants are used, right? These usually aren't long-term, kind of what we might refer to as tonic plants or you know, remedies that you're using to kind of more rejuvenate or replenish or revitalize the system. Uh, these are usually plants that are used in short-term acute situations. And I think if you just follow good dosing uh, strategies uh, and proper forms of the herbs, I don't think you got too much to worry about.